Hey there, it's Brennan from Attune Insurance again. I wanted to take a quick moment and walk you through some of the questions that other independent agents have gotten stuck on when filling out their first cyber insurance application. Now, at Attune and Coalition, we pride ourselves on the shortened underwriting application. However, it's okay if you get stuck. This video is here to help. The first few questions I feel are extremely easy to answer regarding previous claims experience or incidents that could give rise to a claim from the past. I have seen a few agents get stuck on the encryption question. Know that most of our insureds here at Attune have been opting for the sometimes answer. Considering the nature of a small business owner, that doesn't surprise me. Most folks don't have an in-house IT department, and it's not likely they'll have encryption implemented on every device. Next, and, and probably the question people get stuck on the most, is regarding sensitive personal information collection. So with data collection or uh, SPI records, we're going to have a few categories. The first category is going to be personally identifiable info, like birthdays, social security numbers, driver's licenses. We're also going to be discussing personal health information here. Now, in the in insurance industry, I know that a lot of you carry records like this within your systems. If any of your insureds have records like this, we'll simply itemize which uh, bucket of record count fits best. Now, this next question is really where people get stuck. What we're asking here for with payment card transactions is going to be how many swipes does your insured take on an annual basis? We're not asking for the dollar value here. Now, moving on, uh, we do have two questions here regarding multimedia content liability. We're simply asking, has your insured been subject to any complaints regarding content they post on their website, social media accounts, et cetera? Think uh, pictures of clients, song rights, any kind of copyright or intellectual property rights. Uh, most of the time, we don't see small business owners having complaints about this because if they receive any kind of feedback, they'll simply pull the content. Now, on the same theme, uh, we typically don't see small business owners go into any kind of extended legal battle over any kind of multimedia content liability. Typically, if any kind of complaint or request comes in, uh, small business owners follow the logical process of pulling the, co uh, the content before it causes any real issues. Uh, next, and, and I'd say probably most importantly here, is going to be any kind of data backup. So when we look at data backup, we're really tying back into our question earlier about record collection and record count. So if we see at your insurance agency, you manage a uh, hundred thousand to half a million records in that SPI, PHI category, we're absolutely going to want to see that you're backing up your data on at least a weekly basis. This significantly mitigates any kind of exposure we'd see in a ransomware attack. And then finally, most importantly, uh, we ask if the small business receives a wire transfer request in excess of $25,000, does the small business owner have a process enforced to validate the authenticity of that funds transfer request? Now, I think we all uh, can laugh about this one here and think if your business received a wire transfer request, request for $32,000, I'm sure that you would go through proper processes to vet the authenticity of that request. And as you can see, in just a few short minutes, we've walked all the way through this underwriting application. And I hope at the end of this, you feel much like I do, that it's really easy and quick to do. Thanks and take care.